Well, you know, it's kind of appropriate. It's family day. Um, and, you know, I'm a 930 guy. So to the 11 a.m., welcome. You know, I'm, my name is Peter. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you a story today. And it's a story about me. But honestly, the story is not about me. And it's about you. And the thing I want you to remember today is the person that I refer to as you, it's not your friend, it's not your brother, it's not your mother or your spouse or your neighbor or whatever, because we kind of project that, but today is specifically about you, okay? So I've been a Christian for 45 years. So I've been a... a G- <laughs> So being a Jesus follower, the way I wanted to, I would describe it, think of a big box. And that big box has no windows, has no doors. And I've been in that box following Jesus for 45 years. I've had trials, I've had tragedies, I've had goodness, and I have victories. And during those 45 years, the one thing I could say is that he's been very, very good to me. But one day, a couple of years ago, all of a sudden a door opened never saw the door, never knew what door was there. And I opened that door, I mean, I walked through that door, and all of a sudden I found myself in another room. Never knew the room was there. And so all of a sudden when I entered that room, this is what I found. Well, we need the next slide. (laughs) We didn't really work on this, but it's all right. (laughs) And the thing what I found is that God is relational. And basically what that means in a nutshell is that God wants to have a relationship with you. And the funny thing about that is that this is something in my 45 years that I missed. How crazy that sounds, but this is something, the reason why I want to share because I don't want you to miss this. So the thing is, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna describe God. And I'm going to try to paint the picture so graphically you visually can see what that is. Number two, I'm going to talk about the relationship. Number three, I'm going to try to put the two together. Number four, we're going to have bagels. (laughs) So that's where we're going, okay? (laughs) All right, so can I have the next one? Okay, so I have a question for you guys today. And the question is, as you see this picture... And my question is, this lady's hat looks like what? So the question is this. This lady's hat looks like... Okay. Okay. Uh Hold on one second. (laughs) All right. So what do we have? We have peacock? Okay, peacock. Anything else? Jellyfish. Anything else? What? A shell. Okay. A flower, okay. Okay, the audience participation is now closed. <laughs> okay. All right, so I got a, a question for you. Does anybody know the chapter in the Bible that is re- referred to, to some, as the UFO chapter? Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter one. So that's where we're going to go today. So if this is Ezekiel chapter one, we're going to read a couple of verses. In my 13th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Kabar River, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning surrounded by a brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and in the fire was looked like four living creatures. In the appearance, their form was human, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their feet were like those of a calf, and gleamed like burnished bronze. Under their wings on their four sides, they had human hands. All four of them had faces and wings, and the wings of one touched the wings of another. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. So, (laughs) now think about this. No, wait, I need that slide. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Ezekiel's down by the river and he sees a windstorm coming out of the north and there's lightning flashing through that. In the center of the windstorm, there's a fire and he sees four living creatures. Now these four living creatures were human-like. They had four faces, they had four wings. And when the wings went out, they touched one another. And also underneath the wings, there were human hands. And then they also had legs, but the legs were bronze and they were shiny. But the feet on those legs were calf legs. And the interesting thing is that these creatures move like back and forth. Okay, can I have the next slide? So then what Ezekiel does in verse 10 to 19, he kind of zooms in on those creatures. So the face of the creature, they had four faces. The front was of a man, the one on the left was an ox, on the right was a lion, and also of an eagle. Now two wings were stretched out, the other two were wrapped around his body. Still had the human hands, but at the bottom of the feet was like this fire, almost like lightning, and this fire was flashing back and forth. But the interesting thing at the bottom of the feet were these wheels, and the wheels intersected one another. But now the crazy thing about the wheels is the rims. The rims were like crystal, like they were shiny, but they were covered with eyes. And the, as these creatures moved up and down, back and forth, the wheels move in the same direction. Now here's a flipped out thing. The spirit was in the wheels. Okay, we'll do the next slide. So then he goes on in 23 and 28, when the voice of the person above spoke, the creatures, as the four of them, they lowered their wings. Now above the creatures was like this expanse. It's like ice or like crystal, but it was very shiny. Now above that expanse looked like there was a throne and on top of the throne looked like a man. And from that man above his, from his waist up looked like fire. But from his waist down also looked like fire, but there was such a brilliant radiance light that it looked like a rainbow on a rainy day. And then he heard the voice of the Lord and Ezekiel fell down. Okay, now we'll go to the next one. So Ezekiel's vision when he's down by the river um, describes it as the glory of God. So sees the um, windstorm coming out of the north, sees the four creatures, expands on the four creatures. The four creatures lower their wings. All of a sudden he sees the throne with this brilliant light like a rainbow surrounding it. We'll go to the next. And the question is, what is this? <laughs> and Ezekiel doesn't know. I don't know. <laughs> and we get a clue because he uses the word it looks like. So we'll go to the next one. Well, in verse 4, I looked and I saw a windstorm. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal. The fire was looked like four living creatures. In 10, their faces looked like. 13, was like burning coals, like torches. 26, looked like a throne. The figure looked like that of a man, his waist up like glowing metal. Comprende? Yeah. Okay. And we'll go to the next one. So the interesting thing is, Ezekiel did what you guys did. He went to his brain, went to his filing cabinet. He did similes, like things that are similar. You didn't know what it was, what that hat was. You're like, now, obviously, it's not a jellyfish. <laughs> It's not a halo, it's not a peacock, but because you didn't know, wow. you basically said, you tried to match up. Yeah. Ezekiel tried to do the same thing. But what it points out is that Ezekiel was human. Yeah. He did not have the ability to describe the supernatural. Yeah. He's finite, we cannot describe the infinite. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay, we'll go on. So now think about this, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, all of this, as flipped out as that sounds, had a beginning. And before that was God. So now that God, as crazy as is, creates us in his image. Think about that. And then he hangs out with us in the garden. 
Think about that. The God of Ezekiel hanging out with us in relationship. So all of a sudden, you know, whoa, 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 sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. So <laughs> basically we know the story that Adam and Eve disobey God. So God is pure, Adam and Eve now are not. So God, you got to, you know, you're not in the garden with me anymore. So there's a separation, there's sin. But God is so unbelievable, he sends his son from heaven to come to earth as a baby grows up dies on the cross and rises from the dead think about that and now we have a bridge back to God so when Jesus leaves what does he do he says hey I'm not going to leave you I'm going to give you God the Holy Spirit to live inside of you so now we'll go so now he introduces that you think of God as a triangle, but really God is almost like a pyramid where there's three sides to that triangle. There's God the Father, there's God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And if you start thinking about that, you start looking at like, there's the endless triangle. You see that triangle, but you also see that there's three pieces to it. There's the God the Father, there's God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And it's all kind of working, and you see it, yeah, I see the triangle, but I see the three pieces. And then we back away and we say, we really, as human beings, cannot comprehend the Trinity. Okay, so we're looking at 3D, right? All right, we'll go again. Now we'll look at the Earth. Now the earth is a 3D object and that's where we live. But now also the earth could be in the fourth dimension. So now the earth has a totally different shape that we don't think about. And you're like, never heard of the fourth dimension. Okay, <laughs> Jesus rise from the dead. What do the apostles do? They go in the upper room, they lock the door. They're afraid, they're hanging out. What does Jesus do? Walks through the wall. <laughs> Hey, peace be with you. <laughs> I mean, think about that. He inhabits the fourth dimension. We don't. And the thing is now think of like the cube in the middle. That's like us. We're like that cube. But there's another whole world that revolves around us that we don't see, that we don't know, that we can't comprehend. We'll go again. So now we look at the God of Ezekiel. We look at the God of Genesis. We look at the Trinity. We look at God as the fourth dimension. And the flipped out thing is what I want to tell you guys today is that same God says, I want to have a relationship with you. And I freaking miss that. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. We'll go again. The almighty God wants to have a relationship with you. And you might know that, and I'm gonna to try to describe how I discovered that or I found that. I'll go again. 2019, um, I'm at Sue and Philip Alford's house. We had a Bible study. Sue makes this announcement and says, um, I'm studying to become a spiritual director. And I encourage all of you to try spiritual direction. And I was like, wow, I never heard of that. And the bottom line is that spiritual directors are lay people. You could be Roman Catholic, Protestant, it doesn't matter, but they're lay people that are trained to listen and to companion with you. And they ask you this one simple question. Tell me about you and God today. That's it. So I asked Sue for the directory. All of a sudden I looked through and I found Donna. Donna lives in Shirley. Donna is my spiritual director. She is here today. She changed my life. It's a, you know, and the thing is that I went in there. What do you think I did? I walked in with the resume and I said, hey, here I am, 45 years. And Donna, unbelievable. You know what she said? Peter, thank you. It's very nice. Tell me about you and God today. 
And you know, as simple as that sound, it's a profound question. For the next year, every month, I would go in and talk to her. About halfway in, or three quarters of the way in, there I am, and I said to Donna, you know what, I'll take the next slide. I understand the God of Ezekiel. I know he's there. But the problem that I'm having is that I can't touch that. There's like a gap. There's something that I can't touch. Listen, Peter, what I want you to do is I want you to go home and sit with it. And what that means is that you go home for the next month and talk to God and ask him to show you that. So I'm in for a couple of weeks. And I'm going to be honest, about two or three weeks in, I was so angry. I basically God gave God the finger. I said, F this. I'm not reading the Bible. I'm not praying. I'm not doing devotion. I'm not doing any of it. You and I are going to figure this out because I know that you're real and I can't touch you. It's, I, 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 there's a gap. And I sat there. And, we, and I basically, well, we worked it out. <laughs> okay, I'll take the next slide. The thing is, as crazy as this sounds, he showed up. And when he did, it's going to be, I had a, a lot of trouble trying to explain it, put it together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to condense it or give it to you so I could like basically put it in your hand. And I hope it makes sense. I'll do. Number one, John Tyson is a pastor at Church of the City in New York City. He grew up in Australia. When he was 15 years old, their church had an outreach. And um, it's a Pentecostal church. And the interesting thing is he said that the outreach wasn't for the neighbors. It was just for their church. During that week, 150 teenagers accepted Jesus Christ. Out of those 150, 40 of them are still in full-time work today. And he's one of them. From Australia, he ends up in New York City. But the interesting thing, he said something special happened that week. And he had this um, thing in his brain about revival. He said something was so special. He always had this drive to figure out what revival is. He did research. He did all this stuff. It was his pet peeve. 2018, some guy in his church come up to him and said, basically, hey, you guys need a vacation. Gave him a check. He comes home, says his family, hey, we're going on vacation. But we're not going to Disney World. We're not going to the Grand Canyon. We're going to go to Europe, and we're going to discover what revival is. So he goes, and he comes back. And he asked his church, he said, you guys want to know what it is? And they said, yeah. And you know what he said? He said, it's hunger. God doesn't show up where he's not wanted. And all of a sudden it clicked for me. I'm sitting in that chair saying, I want you to show up. I had a hunger to know. And that's the first thing I'm going to ask you today. Do you have that hunger? Because if you don't, he's not showing up. Number two. I honor God daily. And if you think about the God of Ezekiel, that picture, I'm not too busy for him. And I show my face even when I don't see his. And I'm not insulting him by bringing my cell phone in. You know, as crazy as that sounds, but this is God. Number three, transparency. If you want to have a real relation with God, you have to be transparent. And the person that I want to speak to today is you, the person behind the facade, behind the wall. Yes. And all of you know that person. That person's private. You know that person the best, but nobody else does. Nobody else can relate. Nobody else gets you. Nobody else understands you. Nobody else knows who that person is. But God does. He just knows. And he wants you to let him in. He wants you to let him know. And I stood there. 
honestly, and I was mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually naked before him. And I said, hey, this is who I am. Warts and all. This is who I like. This is who I don't like. This is what makes sense. This is what doesn't make sense. But I told him. He already knows, but I had to tell him. I had to go through that process. So the first thing is, and I do it every day, I am transparent saying, God, this is what's going on. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm thinking. I'm not hiding. Number three, number four, surrendering. Surrendering happens for me in two ways. Number one is that the stuff, the crap that we're carrying and also the surrender on the inside. All of us, have stuff and it's like God is trying to say listen tell me what it is but you don't carry it I want to carry that for you so push it on me how many of us we just constantly carry it and also like think about you personally surrendering are you letting go and think about your heart and I'm draw a picture think of your heart that has many rooms in it and we all know those rooms. Some of those rooms are locked. Some of those rooms are dark. Those rooms have corners and cracks that we don't want anybody to know. And I don't know what's in there. But the bottom line is, I've been there. I got injustice. I have disappointment, loneliness, crap, everything. But God is trying to say, listen, what's better? You want to hold on to that? Or do you want to open that door and let me in? Because his presence is what he wants. And I'm going to be a thousand percent honest with you since I'm trying to ask you to be transparent. Donna came to me one day and she said, Peter, don't you know that your heavenly father loves you? And you know what I said? No, it's a blank Think about that. I'm up here freaking 45 years, right? Doing all this, telling you this, whatever it is. Because of my background, you can connect the dots. I don't know who the father is. And that's okay. I open that door. The presence of Jesus is in there. We're going to work it out. So I don't know what you got in your rooms, man. But I'm just trying to say, please let it go. Please open the door. If it's unforgiveness, if it's anger, whatever it is, he's better to be in there than what you don't want him in there for. Number five, asking and receiving. I never knew asking was relational. I thought asking was bothering him. (laughs) And he says, hey, ask away. But also he says, receive. And a lot of times we don't ask because we don't want to receive because we don't want to know what he's going to say because we're afraid. If I say, hey, I sur- wherever you want me to go, Jesus, that's where I'm going. All right, you're going to Africa. Whoa. <laughs> and, you know, and that's where we come from a lot. We don't really want to be 100% transparent. But the point is this, ask. And then receive. He's God. He's a God of Ezekiel that's saying, whatever I'm going to respond back to you, it's the best for you. Number six, listening. You know, God speaks. And that's another topic for another whole day. And normally it comes back down to like two things. Either he says, I'm going to take care of the problem or I'm going to show you how you take care of it. But he talks back, as flipped out as that sounds. And it's not like this, it's different. Okay. So we put it all together. My relational relationship with God is having a hunger, showing up daily with a consistency, being transparent, surrendering, asking and receiving, and listening. So it's almost like your part And then he's going to do his part. And you kind of like, that's my picture. And that's what I missed. That's what I didn't know. And it's pretty simple. Okay. So when we put it all together, on top was me. Peter positionally knowing Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. God was the big G-O-D. On the bottom is Peter having a relationship with God. Capital G, 
OD because he wants to hang out with me. He wants to know Peter that's behind the facade and he wants the same thing with you. So I have two questions today. Whoa. Question number one, and this is like an honest question, and I've been 100% transparent with you guys. Is there anybody here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you can honestly say today, I feel the nudging of the Holy Spirit on my heart this morning. And if that's you today, God wants me to give you a hug. And if you'll be 100% transparent and stand, I'm going to give you a hug. Okay. Number two, I was blind, but now I see. Think about all you guys that have been given the gift that you see. You see. You know the deal. You get it. So the question is, is there anybody this morning that's feeling the Holy Spirit nudge you this morning that's saying, you know what? I would like a deeper, more intimate relationship with God. And if that's you this morning, God wants me to give you a hug. So would you please stand? Wow. <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> so what we're going to close is, what we're going to do is, um, you know what? Instead of putting your hands out, you're going to put your arms out. And just imagine that you're hugging God and he's hugging you back. Okay? So here we go. God, we're here today. Our arms are around you. And we know that your arms are around us. I just want... And my prayer is for everybody to have a real relationship with you, to know you on a daily basis, to invite you in, to be transparent, to surrender it all. Heavenly Father, and I pray that you just show up. I pray that you just present yourself and that all of us, Father, would just know you in an intimate, on a daily basis. Amen. Okay. Bagels. Yeah. <laughs>